Hey friends, if you're following this channel, you probably know that you should rely on user-first locators to avoid creating flaky end-to-end -end tests. But sometimes locating the required elements can be challenging because the options of these locators, for example, get by role, are limited. In these situations, the locator.end function shines. If you haven't used it, this video is for you. As always, I created a quick demo project to show you how locator.end works. We see here my little party cool website. And when I hit this blue button, a new party member, this raccoon, will be added to the site. And when I remove it again, it will disappear. There are no surprises here. So how could we test this? I already prepared an example test case here in my editor. It is called Party Raccoon is Added. It already navigates to my example app. It uses one of these user first locators. So we're locating the button by its accessible name, add friend. Then we're locating the success message, raccoon added. And then we wait for this message to be visible. The problem is now that it's very challenging to locate the newly added party member because they all look the same and they all come with a button that is labeled with the same accessible name, remove. And this means that I cannot just go into my playwright test case and say, wait, page, get by role. I want to have a button and then I want to click the button that has the accessible name remove. Unfortunately, this will resolve to four elements. And when I now go to my terminal and I run npx playwright test chain, the chain here filters by file name. And this file is called locator chain spec. Playwright will complain about it because get by role is now locating, here we go, four button elements. So this isn't great. Of course, I could now go into my locator and I could say, maybe I want to have the last one, or maybe I want to have the nth one here to locate this new raccoon that was just showing up, but I'd rather be explicit here. And if you watch closely, you probably notice where we're heading now. These buttons come with data test IDs that we can use to locate these buttons. And we will chain them with our fancy get by role in a second. So where do we get this data test ID from? When we inspect the application's HTML, we will discover that our success message, raccoon added, comes with a handy data attribute that tells us the ID of the recently added raccoon. And with this knowledge, we can go into our test case and we can say const ID equals await success message get attribute and here we pass our data raccoon id and now we have the id that we can use to locate the remove button so let's comment out our previous click and create a new locator called remove button now because we have the id we can do page get by test id here we give it a template string because otherwise typescript will complain let's close this here we go and now we have the remove button. And we can now go on and say remove button, click. And that's it. But there's one big problem with this. We now lost our user first locator. Any HTML element now with this test ID will work and we can click on it. But maybe it will be a diff. Maybe it will be an image. Maybe it will be entirely broken functionality for your users. And that's not great. So let's fix it by chaining locators. We can go right after our get by test ID locator and we can say, and now we pick the locator that we have here, page get by role button with the name remove. And now what we did is we chained these locators. So remove button will now be a role button. So real button that is properly labeled with remove and will also include the test ID that we got from the success message. So whenever you're using user-first locators and you're missing some options to nail down the elements that you want to select, and will be your friend. So let's finish up this test case and to close the test case, say, wait, expect, remove a button, not to be visible. Here we go. And when we now run our test case from the terminal, so let's do npx playwright test chain once more. We hopefully have a green test case. And this looks pretty good to me. So always remember, end-to-end -end testing can be hard and sometimes locating the elements that you want to interact with can be challenging. 
but there's no reason to give up on these nice user-first locators because at the end of the day, your end-to-end -end tests should mimic user behavior, not necessarily look for classes, data test IDs, or any application specifics. And that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, drop them below. And always remember, when you're using Playwright for end-to-end -end testing, you might want to check out Checkly for synthetic monitoring to guarantee that your products, sites, and apps are available, working, and functioning at all times. And I will talk to you next week again.